The UBC has a very strong reputation for earthquake engineering research and earthquake engineering teaching. There's no doubt our department is one of the top departments in Canada. Um, then within earthquake engineering, we're by far the largest um, and have the primary focus in that area. The earthquake engineering program at UBC has been in place since the 1970s, right? That's when many of my predecessors started building up the program. And, and UBC was, was recognized in the world as a good center for earthquake research. Over the years, we've had quite a few professors at UBC that have made important contributions to um, earthquake engineering in general. Liam Finn, who is still very active, um, has been around for 40 years. I joined UBC, Department of Civil Engineering, in 1961. And the president told me what my mission was. I should try to change the department from a teaching department to a research department. And the department, I think, flourished. We had one of the first shake tables in Canada for earthquake engineering. So we just developed the concept of the earthquake research facility that will be a facility that does experimental work and analytical work towards minimizing the effects of earthquakes in structures. We start developing this new system which we call um, fused structure system. This is a new type structure system. Um, basically, it's just like designing the regular structure, but we put in this specially detailed component, uh, like when you drive your car, you have these sharp absorbers. We put it into the building, so in the event of the earthquake comes, it will absorb the earthquake energy, and it could be damaged if it needed to be, but after an earthquake, we just replace them. One thing that we have looked at now, in fact, in recent years, is the regional seismic risk to the Metro Vancouver area. In the 70s, we had a large uh, building boom in the 60s and 70s in Vancouver. Those buildings weren't really designed for earthquakes, right? So we're now looking at them and seeing how will they perform when an earthquake comes along. We're looking at the existing buildings, we're doing computer models, we're trying to identify which are the characteristics of those buildings which we need to be most concerned about. And we, I think with, in some cases, with a little bit of, of retrofit in advance, we could make a big difference. Uh, one of the things that we did was to, to, to develop techniques to identify how, what the vulnerabilities are and in an overall sense, uh, come up with uh, mitigation plans so that uh, the vulnerability would be reduced and, and of course the, the utility owner would make the right decisions based on that. We can retrofit buildings at about 60 to 70 percent of the cost of a code design building and that's a huge saving. If we have an earthquake here in Vancouver and all the schools and buildings in, that have been retrofitted or built with what we have developed at UBC do well. That children are safe and people are safe. That for us will be the ultimate success, right? So, so our effort is mainly uh, public safety, right? On the public schools. The concept of the early warning system to deploy sensors in the, the areas where you expect possible earthquakes. They detect the P wave. And for the schools, what we are doing is if the P waves arrive, uh, the network will notify all the schools and an alarm will sound and the children are trained to go on their desk. So by the time the S waves arrive to the site, people know that there is shaking coming. Right? And that's the idea of the early warning system. And in addition to that, we establish a monitoring program with collaboration with the Ministry of Transportation to put sensors on, on bridges to monitor the activity. If there is an earthquake, we can immediately know what is happening at the bridge through internet access. What we are trying to do is to get municipalities, the decision makers, the politicians to understand that these tools we develop looking at the region, looking at the network, looking at the interaction between say failure of a water pipeline uh, with the functionality of a building. We actually have now uh, established a uh, pipeline uh, integrity institute at UBC and uh, it's in the interests of everybody uh, 
uh, whether it's the government, the owners or the public, uh, to make sure that the pipelines are safe. We have, I think, probably, if not the best, one of the best laboratories in, in geotechnical engineering on the planet. Potentially, we can use our computer simulation, break out the structure to multiple smaller components, and part of it could be tested here at UBC, and the rest could be modeled in the computer. Uh, we work very closely with implementing um, performance-based design into the building design. With our work doing here in UBC, we're very well known worldwide, and we are setting constant collaboration with many other countries. I am one of the members um, which we call Standing Committee for Earthquake Engineering. So this particular committee is only 19 um, members in the nation. So a lot of this leading edge research we are working on, we implement it into the building code and it's adopted nationwide. The new code that's coming out in 2015, for the first time, the subduction earthquake, the big one they call it, that earthquake is being included in the probabilistic analysis of what the hazard might be. Are we going to have the ability as Canadians, the resilience, to get back in our feet after we have an event like that? For us, it's a matter of developing uh, effective tools to do optimization, to predict explicit building performance. So to me, looking into the future, it's about how we use computers. I think I'm, I'm uh, very uh, proud that the work that we are doing will, will definitely contribute to, uh, to uh, solving uh, problems across the globe and, and that is the intent actually. We have to be able to do research and we are doing research uh, to, to find solutions that are not only local but global.